Okay, first thing I do is find out if we actually do have power to this thing. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is go to this little strip right here. Okay, if you have power between C and W, uh, if you're showing 24 volts there, then you don't have to worry about things like you got a fuse right here. Uh, you don't have to worry about that because power is already through there. If you don't have it to between C and W, then I would take one of my probes and go to R. If you have power to R and not power to W, then you got a thermostat problem. You can jump the thermostat out by going from R to W here, and that will, if the unit starts, then you know you have a problem with thermostat. If you don't have any power there, you got to look at breakers and, and switches and so on. Okay, moving on. If there are other problems, if everything comes out fine here, then we'll look elsewhere. Okay, we've got a couple of parts up here that could be an issue. We have a limit switch here. We have a pressure switch here. This pressure switch is normally closed. So if there is a venting problem, now the hoses aren't on this pressure switch at this point, but one goes here and one goes uh, down to here, to the vent pipe. And uh, if this uh, opens, if the inducer starts and then this thing opens and it shuts it off, then it means that there is a vent blockage somewhere. Off. Now I've just got it hooked up to one hose right now. But if there's a vacuum problem or there's excessive pressure in the vent pipe, and it's got to be really bad for it to happen, it'll do this. Okay. If you heard that, you can tell that every time it pulls a vacuum, it shuts off the pressure switch. And when it shuts off the pressure switch, then the vacuum goes back to normal because the inducer shuts off. So you'll see it just doing that back and forth, back and forth. Uh, pretty uncommon failure. This pressure switch I don't think is all that valuable. Okay, next thing in line is that limit switch right there if it's stuck on or something like that. Other problems you may have with this thing, if this inducer fails to start, check power coming to it. You got two terminals right there. If the thing, uh, most of the failures in these little tiny motors are bearings and you can see that it doesn't turn. You can feel up in here and you can try to turn it there. You can turn it here, something like that. Let me get a little closer. Let me, you know, if you got power coming into here and it does not turn uh probably the first thing i would do would see if that turns now that one's turning pretty easily there so it's okay but uh, uh that's your rotor on the motor and if it doesn't turn then you got bearing problems in the motor and it's probably failed okay that's electrical failures up to the ignition control board Next, we'll talk about the control board and gas-related failures in the next video.